Have you been looking for a quick home decor project? Well, I've got one for you because here's what I'm doing. I am decorating our new Stencil Girl headquarters and I wanted to showcase our stencils in a colorful way. We've kind of done the whole decor in just like a black and white and gray, really neutral motif. So I thought, wouldn't it be fun to splash it up with some color? And I picked a color scheme first that is blue, orange, and then this lime green. And then I also still have some black and white art. And I have used individual stencils manufactured by our company on all of these wood panels. But I had another idea. I thought, well, what if you wanted to use a bunch of stencils on a piece? And I've got a quick and easy way for you to do just that. So hang on and let's get going. First of all, let me tell you that it's gonna be easiest if you use a wood panel. This is wood and it is already comes with a gesso, which is like a primer on top of it. And that is the easiest and best way to start because it has a solid surface. When we get to the stenciling part, this will make a lot more sense. But for now, I'll just tell you that, okay? I'm gonna color this one in my light green color by Golden Paints. This is a really fun color. And you, if you're doing this project at home, would obviously pick whatever decor color you might wanna use. Or you could just do black and white like I did on some of those others. This is a roller that I like. It's a hardware store product and the foam part that I'm using is the roller that is made if you were going to paint cabinetry and you want like a really smooth finish. So you don't want one of those really hairy rollers. You want a kind of a smooth spongy roller. You can see when you just roll this out, I'm not rolling it out for anything except for background. When we stencil, we'll use a completely different technique, but this is just to get the background down quickly. This is a transparent paint. And so you can see the green is sort of, the white like comes through the background a little bit, which I like. I think it's a beautiful effect. It gives you the impression of layers when it's not really layered. And once you have the black of the stencil on there, it's not gonna make a huge difference. So what I'm saying is you probably only need one coat of paint, so. Let's just put this paint down, let it dry, and then we'll talk about the layout. I, you might wonder what is this that I'm using as my palette? Well, it is just um, an old book and I use these as my palette and then what I do is tear off the pages and I use them in my collage, my collage work. I just find they're kind of fun. You could use a paper plate, you can use a you could actually use a real palette or you could even use a paint tray. So, <laughs> but this is what this is, just a book text, nothing fancy. I usually go both directions like this. Try not to overcomplicate it. Main thing is to get your background paint down if you wanna do a background. All right, it's looking good and I'm gonna let this dry and then we'll come back and work on a layout. All right, the green has dried down now and I wanted to mention something real quick before we go any further. You know, since this was pre-primed, it had these white sides. So I wanted the sides to remain white. So I didn't paint them green, but you, you have options. If you preferred to have those green, you could paint them green or you, know, you could leave them white like I did. And if you happen to get any paint on there that you need to clean off later, a magic eraser is a fantastic thing to use for that. I keep these in my studio all the time. You can see I've been using them and I'll just cut off a section of it and wet it and then wipe the edge and it cleans it up just instantly. So they're really great to use. All right, I've already got this pretty much laid out, but I wanted to explain to you what I did and how easy it is because here's the thing. Stencil Girl doesn't like to measure. I like to eyeball things. 
Ahem. So, <laughs> I picked an 18 inch by 18 inch panel for this because I know that we make six by six stencils. So six, 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 18, six, 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 18. So you need nine stencils. And you know what? You don't wanna buy nine stencils? Use one stencil and Warhol it. Remember, Andy Warhol did that, you can too. All right, so that makes it super easy to lay out. You don't have to measure anything, you just lay them out. Now, the other thing I did to make this an easier job is I used Pixie Spray. This is a repositionable adhesive. It's in a spray form like this, and you just shake it up and spray the back. All of these have been adhered already, and this does not leave a cruddy residue on your background. It doesn't leave a cruddy residue on your stencil. I love this stuff. So I'm gonna just spray it, and then you let it wait for one minute before you put it down. So I'm gonna turn away from the camera for a minute. and then we'll just wait for a minute. That's the hardest part, is waiting for a minute. I always get so excited to start my project that I wanna charge forward. So you might notice a difference in the stencils that I put down here. These are actually called masks. And what happens is you put it down and I'll stencil around this and all the color will be around the flower, whereas this, the flower itself will be stenciled. And it just gives a little bit of variety to the layout, which I like, and that's why I decided to do it. So I did it symmetrical, so I have the four masks and then the stencils and the rest. This is actually a stencil and mask combo in that you could cut this away and you could use it as mask or you could put it back in and use it as a stencil. I love that option with the art. And since I saved the center to last, it just fits right in the middle there. Voila. All right, now, you can get this part of it done, paint it at another time, but if you're anything like me, you wanna just get going because I wanna see how it looks already. So to paint it, I use sponges and I like a dense sponge. If you happen to live in a city that has a Daiso store, these come from Daiso, I love them. This is an ink blusher, and I like this one very much too, it's a dense sponge. And then this is a tulip, it's usually found in the fabric section of your big box stores. So these are three sponges I really like. Once again, I use the vintage book, or really just any kind of book, as my, um, my palette, and I'm grabbing a little bit of black paint. I am using a black gesso. You can hardly see it, but it's made by Golden. It is a well-used container. I like the black gesso because it's gonna give you more of a, a matted finish, kind of almost like a chalk paint type finish. If you prefer glossy, use glossy. Whatever you like is whatever you should use, right? Okay, here is this. I'm gonna, the best way to stencil, let's say you've never done this before, is to just bounce up and down with the sponge. You might notice I keep the sponge itself pretty dry. I put the paint on and then I pounce it off. And I find that I get the most crisp result when I stenciled that way. And don't try to rush it. Nothing good can be gained by rushing your stencil process. Pouncing up and down with your sponge is indeed the best way to do it. Okay, I'm gonna proceed on with these and um, this, so that one is a stencil that I did. Let's do a mask so you can see the difference. And the mask, you can see, is pretty much bordered up by these other stencils. So I'm not gonna remove anything until the end. I'm gonna just stencil all around here. Honestly, this whole business about masks and stencils just drives me a little bit cuckoo because they're all to be used for your art and craft pleasure and the labels, just don't worry about the labels. When you look at the Stencil Girl website, all you need to know is whatever is shown in black 
is where your paint's going to end up. Whatever is shown in white is the actual plastic of the stencil. That's the mylar. And that's all you need to know. It's really just that simple. So masks, stencils, whatever, they all work beautifully and you can create a wide variety of artistic effects. All right, it's time for the big reveal. I'm excited, I don't know what about you. And you might be wondering about these dirty stencils. What do I do with the dirty stencils? Well, I'll tell you what, I don't do much of anything with them. Oh, look at that, look at that. But if you wanna keep your stencils clean, just have a little, a little bucket of water nearby, maybe with some dish soap or something in it. Toss them in there and you can clean them off later. No rhyme or reason to taking them off now or taking them off as you, you know, earlier when it's wet or dry, doesn't matter. Both ways are fine. <gasps> this is the bomb, people. Okay, now I'm not glad this happened, but I'm kind of glad it happened. I got a few little marks here that I'm gonna go back and touch up with the green paint. So if you have that, you obviously already own the paint, so you can just go back and fix it. And that's what I'm gonna do. But I'll have to say, I am pretty jazzed about this. Oh my goodness. I can already see there, I didn't get as close to the edges I'd like either, so I'll go back with a little black paint. And you can, well this one, this one apparently wants to live on the painting. <laughs> there it is. In really a very short period of time, a lovely piece of art that for us is gonna decorate Stencil Girl headquarters, but for you, maybe it would decorate, you know, your family room, your kitchen, a kid's room. We have 2,000 stencils with every theme imaginable. So take a look and I am sure you'll find something you like. I'm Mary Beth Shaw from Stencil Girl Products. Thank you so much for watching.